Hello, oh, so today I'm going to be talking about some of the pros and cons of living in Provo, Utah, and we are going to get started right now. Mariah Curla here. Welcome back to the channel. So glad you are here. This channel is literally everything you need to know about living, eating, sleeping, working, and playing in Salt Lake City. You, if you want to know more about that information, consider subscribing down below so you don't miss a thing. People from all over reaching out who are looking to move, relocating to Salt Lake City, Utah. If you are thinking about making a move, consider giving us a call, shooting us a text, or sending us an email, and we would love to help you in the process. So one of my favorite pros of living in Provo, Utah, and I know this by experience because many years ago, my husband was finishing up grad school in Provo, Utah. So we had the experience after we had gotten married, we moved here to Utah and I got to live here for a year before we did even now. So pro number one for living in Provo, Utah is definitely going to be the number of outdoor activities there are to do. Now, I know this might sound funny, but there are so many things. If you're into hiking, if you're into biking, if you're into skiing, if you're into truly walking, if you are into fly fishing or regular fishing, any of those things, there are a ton of things that you can do right in Provo and in the surrounding areas. So one of actually, when we're talking about hiking, one of the most famous hikes in Provo, Utah, if you come to Provo, you'll see a big Y on the mountain and they call it Y Mount, okay? And there are probably, I think about 13 switchbacks back and forth, but there's a great little trailhead so you can park right at the bottom of the trailhead and then you can walk all the way up that the, you know, why mount? And I'll, oftentimes during homecoming or special occasions, they will white, they will actually light up the big giant white Y that is on the hill on the mountain. And you can see it from all over the valley and it is gorgeous. So homecoming is usually a time that they do that, but again, sometimes special occasions. But once you hike up there, you've got incredible views of all of the valley. So Outdoor activities are abundant in Provo and there's always people doing things and going places. And speaking of the outdoors for my pro number one of living in Provo, Utah, is definitely gonna be also, when we're talking about outdoor activities, the proximity to other outdoor activities. So Utah is land of so many national parks. So I know when Eric and I were living in Provo as college students, we would go down to, you know, Zion or Bryce Canyon or Capitol Reef. There were so many little day trips that you could take. And obviously if you wanted to stay overnight, you definitely could, but you could go down there in three hours, go hiking and come on back to Provo. So outdoor activities are abundant. So my con number one is going to have to be because Provo is a college town, College Town, it brings in a lot of traffic. So because there are so many students during the fall and the spring semesters at Brigham Young University, because that is the big university in Provo, you've got 30 plus thousand students coming right into Provo. So for example, when Eric and I were living in Provo over the summer, we felt like half the population of Provo was gone. And so we really felt like it was empty and there really wasn't very much traffic there, you know, getting places was very easy and the number of accidents was limited because there were so many fewer drivers and just less traffic. So once fall and spring semester come in to Provo, the population ups and that's when traffic can be, um, you know, a little bit of an issue and same with the accidents. Again, it's compared to other big cities and whatnot, it's very, it's mild, but you're definitely going to see an uptick in the number of drivers and the number of accidents. So that's gonna to have to be my con for Provo. So my pro for number two for Provo, Utah is going to be the education and the number of educational opportunities, even if you're not going to the university, 
There are so many things that you can learn and do in Provo. So they're constantly, they have beautiful museums there. They have the downtown historic thing. There's always things that are going on that are educational. They have farmers, farmers markets that are outside and they'll have people teaching little classes on different things. And with that being said, with the educational piece, it lends itself very well for being so family friendly. And because it's so family friendly, again, there's just people are learning and people are doing and people are growing. And it's a great way to link arms with other people who are doing similar things to you. So con number two to living in Provo, Utah is going to be the road construction. Now, with that being said, the city has done a fabulous job of beautifying and restoring the downtown, restoring areas around Brigham Young University. So this con is a little double-edged because yes, there's a lot of construction, but the construction over these years that I have noticed personally has really beautified um, this city. So as much as, you know, it's a little bit of an inconvenience having some of the road construction, having some of the detours, it actually in the long run ends up being a pro because they're only making the city better. Okay, so number three, this is actually going to be a pro and a con to living in Provo, Utah, and so I'm going to do that one together. Pro number three and con is going to be the weather. And I know and it's funny because people here in Utah, we love to talk about the weather because the weather is so unpredictable a lot of times. But pro tip for the weather is you've got four beautiful seasons here. Very distinct. Summers are going to be warm, but not usually too warm where you can't go outside and, you know, do fun things. Mornings are usually cool in the summers. And then it tends to get warm and it'll stay warm pretty late on too. So, which is very nice. Then you've got beautiful falls with the change of seasons and the colors and you know, all of that, which is gorgeous. Then you move right into winter, ski season hits, and that is amazing. Um, sometimes winter can last a little long and that's where I'm gonna give you my con for that because sometimes winters, by the time you get to April, you're ready for the snow. Most people are ready for the snow to be done in April. And sometimes Utah just likes to have snow a little bit more, or even you get into May and all of a sudden you think, oh wait, we just had, we're, we're having spring in April. And then it snows again in May and you're thinking, wait, did we just have like a fake spring or something? It's winter again. How did this happen? So I'm going to have to definitely say that the weather here, because it's kind of unpredictable, could be both a pro because you get, again, the four beautiful seasons, but a con, if you're ready for, you know, that winter to be done, sometimes it can be a little bit too long. However, something that is, you know, actually very helpful about Provo, Provo is what they call a mild, very mild climate. And because of the dryness, the summers don't get, you know, the hot doesn't get too hot and the cold doesn't get too cold. And a lot of times the snow will melt very fast in Provo just because of the way it's situated in that valley. So three is gonna to have to go to pro and con of the weather. And again, you're also gonna have the, it's a dry, it's a dry cold and a dry hot. So again, because of the dryness, not it doesn't feel too hot and it doesn't feel too cold as well. So that's gonna be for my number three. All right, number four, Provo, Utah, pro for living in Provo, Utah is going to be the competitive cost of living. Not a lot of other big cities are you going to be able to find cost of living for the prices that you get in Provo, Utah. So I'm talking about the housing. With the housing, you know, typical rents, again, they, I remember, I might date myself here, but I remember when my husband was going to school there, he was able to rent an apartment, a shared apartment with, you know, in student housing. But over the summer, he could rent for one month, $150 for the month. And I do have to say it has not gone up that much higher. Maybe now you could rent a shared apartment for a couple hundred dollars, but it's nothing, you know, it's nothing crazy like it would be in other places. Same thing, different activities. Because you're in a college town, the cost of living, there are so many fun cheap, affordable activities to do. They have the bowling alley that people actually want to go to the bowling alley and they take their families to the bowling alley. So not only is it a great like college town where, you know, college kids can come and do all that, but it's also amazing for families too, because 
they make things very affordable. They have the Provo Rec Center, which is incredible. It's a indoor gym. They've got indoor swimming there. They've got outdoor swimming there. They've got a skate park. They've got pickleball courts. They've got tennis courts. You name it, there's a ton of, ton of different things there. So along with that cost of living, you can get yourself a fabulous gym membership there for a very minimal price, especially if you're a resident. And Provo definitely rewards residents that are living there. Um, and you can have large discounts on different things for that. So cost of living is definitely another pro to living in Provo, Utah. All right, number four, con a living in Provo, Utah. I'm going to have to actually give this to, and this again can be a pro and a con. If you're familiar with this, then you're gonna be like, oh, this is so easy. But for people who are moving to Provo from out of state, their brain might do a little like, what? Okay, let me tell you, it's called the grid system. Now, Provo has their streets numbered on the grid system. And what that basically means is they have, you know, a center street and, or like, for example, in Utah, they have, a, um, in Provo, they have a center street, but then they also have like University Avenue. And it's gonna be a street that runs from south to north and it's basically their main street, right? And then off of those main streets, they have what, you know, they have them numbered. So 100 north, 100 south, they're gonna have the east and the west and all that. So you might um, find an address and it says that the house is located at 100 west and 300 south, right? And you might go, wait, what? Wait, where is that? But because it's all on a grid system, if once you figure out the grid system, it totally makes sense. But if you don't understand the grid system, for example, if you're living somewhere else and typically it's like, oh, I live on Strawberry Street. Oh, I live on Isabel Drive. Oh, I live right on these different streets. And you just kind of get an idea. But this is all based on a grid system. And surrounding Provo, many of the other um, cities have also based their streets and everything on the grid system. So it can be a pro, but it is also can be a con as well. All right, wrapping things up here, number five pro for living in Provo, Utah is definitely going to have to be the job opportunities, the startup companies, the honestly, the work ethic. I've seen so many people that are hungry to work that, you know, are just innovative and creative. And there are so many different job possibilities and opportunities for that. And going along with that, I have noticed something here in Utah that people want to have a good work-life balance. They, they want to go to work and they want to earn money and they earn that good living, but they also want to have fun. So a lot of places here in Utah that, you know, have offices and stuff, they're going to have a pickleball court in the back of <laughs> outside um, of their office, or they're going to have ping pong tables or pool tables, or they're going to have a bas an indoor basketball hoop where people can shoot hoops during lunch or take a break. And so it creates that really nice work-life balance. And I've noticed that many, you know, in many different um, work environments here. So Provo provides a lot of that. And there are a lot of big time, you know, companies there. And then just north of Provo, Utah too, you have Lehigh, Utah, which has the Silicon Slopes, big tech industry, lots of startups that are there as well. So those are definitely gonna have to be my five pros and cons of living in Provo, Utah. If you are interested in finding out more about moving to this great state and great city, please feel free to give me a call, shoot me a text or send me an email and I would love to help you find what you are looking for. Hope you have a wonderful day, take care.